Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Please, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Osaiwa Mestali and today I have with me Diola and Uti Elu. Hello ladies. Hello. Our Monday people. What up one? <laughs> <laughs> how was the weekend? Who are we starting with? Diola, how was your weekend? Busy. Ah, I can't tell. I hope it's productive, busy. Mm, yeah. so it's not the one that will just be jumping up and this nah. time, like, if he's not bringing money, trust me. You know what? There's that audio that says you want to talk to me. Will he collect money from me? Will he take money? <laughs> will he bring money? Will he bring money? You will ask me if he's not bringing money. I'm not interested. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my it's quite productive for me. Okay. How, how was your weekend? My weekend was busy. Um, trying to just do some. Repair works in the house, so had artisans and mm. trying to also clear out stuff. I think for me, I, I'm on the NASA made fun of me and sent me a meme sometime last week about people who um, have a lot of stuff. So I was trying to tell her she leave me alone. I'm already on the minimalist kick where I'm trying to clear out my house and <laughs> give away stuff, like yeah. so much baby stuff and kid stuff and all. So I think I spent time this weekend trying to sort. A lot of those mm. things and so i've been telling people to watch my whatsapp stories i'm going to start putting up things for giving away faster fingers and, and come on nice. we don't give our own long time ago <laughs> you know the good thing about me men <laughs> not <laughs> men. no the good thing about me is mm. first of all i bought really expensive things with my first son so um of course the younger brother used it then you know when my sister started having mm good enough they were boys so it was just like oh yeah pass it down she has even passed it down to yeah. another in fact she actually shipped it down to either benin or abuja wow. to some a family because they are that quality when you buy quality things yeah i yeah. i get you it's hard to let it go yeah so i must really be sure that, the people that I've even given, so all the baby stuff because yeah. i did the same thing as well like, and you know you when you're having your first child you don't actually think about this yeah, like, like, you don't think bye, about bye, bye. <laughs> you know and i can tell people i think I, I bought one of the most expensive breast pumps and I don't think I used that thing twice or three times. Like, it was the <laughs> similar most mind-numbingly annoying... Ex so I just, I literally gave it away. But I've, I, over time, you know, some things you just want to be sure that the people you're giving it to will take yeah. care of it. Mm. So I have over time. But even still, I think naturally, if you're a bulk buyer like me, um, you just find that eventually you will have like two of things or three of things and you've gone past that point where you know you I'm just not going to yeah. use these things mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. um, and even for certain things, I think it's I'm I've found it hard to apply that if you haven't used it in six months. Then, but so I'm yeah. trying to do that now. Oh no, I'm even really, now, really, 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 I hate clutters. Mm -hmm. Like literally, if I have something that I've been looking at it last year. Two years, I've not used it. I would pack it up and go and give it to Benevolent. Yeah, no. yeah. So, uh, so I'm so happy to learn again, that now. The good thing with my own church is that if you give it to Benevolent, you are yeah. very sure it will be put in good use. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So yeah. I put all those things. I, in fact, when my boys came back home this holiday, they actually cleared out their closets, you know, because almost everything, they've all outgrown oh, them. Good. And, you know, again, with them, we buy very, because of the, it's difficult to get their things. So usually their things come in really expensive. So... They just packed everything to church and they donated it to benevolence. So I think it's good for you to just declutter. Mm. And again, I always believe in that principle. When you let go, more will more come. come and I suppose just hoarding. All right, so one of the responsibilities of lawmakers is to pass the country and state annual budget. Uh, regrettably, transparency and accountability concerns have continuously plagued this um, particular arm of government. So tonight, in conjunction with Enough is enough. We'll be focusing on holding the legislature <laughs> accountable. This, how much did they give this legislature again? Please now tell me why are you laughing. How much did they give them? Don't call my name. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our second stanza from the national anthem says, Oh God of creation, direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth. To know mm. so one of the responsibilities that i've mentioned is this transparency so um june 20 2023 says for decades people of um no sh sorry let me give you just let's let's quickly run down that's a long story mm -hmm. it says um join community development advocacy or civil society organizations focusing on specific issues you can pressure elected representatives and 
senators to address pressing concerns by mobilizing grassroots support and by encouraging others to hold your representatives accountable um, actively. So suppose you believe that a law or legislative decision is unconstitutional. In that case, you can engage your community or advocacy group to challenge its validity. So how do we get to these communities? I think that would be the question. Mm. Uh, let me come to you, Diola. Okay. Um, so also talking about the National Assembly, um, I think it's important that people know that there are 360 members and that um, the number of uh, members vary per state depending on population and land mass. Um, we have the most in Kano and Lagos which, um, with um, 24 representatives each. And then the list is um, Nasarawa and Bayelsa with five um, representatives each. And then the FCT has um, two members. Also, um, the number of members vary per state. Oh, um, sorry. FCT um, currently has um, no seats. Um, okay, I think this is a, a bit of a mistake, but let me um, take that again. The most states with the members would be Kano and Lagos with 40 members each. And then the list with um, Taraba, Yobe, Zamfara, Play 2, Nasarawa, Kwara, Eboi, Edo, Enugu, Gombe, Aba, Bayelsa, and Cross River with 24 members each. At the local government council, um, you have, um, well, councillors don't pass laws, but they regulate the affairs of the local government. Mm. And um, the functions of legislature, let me just quickly read that. Um, senators, members of the House of Representatives, and state houses of assembly members have five primary functions. Pass the state or nation's annual budget, make laws to promote peace, order, and good governance, oversee projects appropriated for implementation by the executive arm, represent the constituents, and consent to high-level appointments, which is um, just the, 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 yeah, which only the senators can do. Mm. So, how do we hold our legislators accountable? I think that's what is um, part now, Abby. Because uh, I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today yes. was, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. that was what I read. Before. Yeah, that was <laughs> what we read. So, um, yeah, so how to hold your um, legislators accountable? So it says, join a local community development groups to pressure your representatives to address issues that affect you. Um, follow the activities of your representatives, for example, the implementation of constituency projects. Um, also, you can recall a corrupt rep uh, um, representative or vote them out during the next elections. So, in doing all of this, first and foremost, you need to know who represents you. You can find the details of your representatives and communicate with them regularly um, via the Office of the Citizen Chatbot, which is your new um, assistant on civic engagement. There you can find the details of your governors, senators, House of Rep members, state House of Assembly members, local government chairmen, and councillors. To get started, uh, send a hello via WhatsApp to 01700 So send hello via WhatsApp to 01700 um, it talks about uh, a bit more on holding your legislators accountable. It says, write to request an explanation about a bill under consideration or request audience for dialogue. And in conclusion, it says, holding your representatives in the legislature accountable will safeguard our democracy by combating corruption and promoting effective governance. So mm. some interesting angles there, mm. perhaps a bit more information needed on how people Absolutely. can actually find yeah. um, and join these local community groups and you know, a bit more information about how to follow the activities, of course, with the media, the news, Absolutely. information like that is out there for you to follow their activities. Okay, so today we want to discuss our ministerial list. We've been holding off on that, um, especially the female representation. And here's what we found as today's quote. Women have always had, a, um, had to be creative about making limited resources work to sustain themselves and their families. They understand what it means to make the hard decisions and to, get, to just get on with it. 
That is why it is imperative for women not just to be the ones dusting off the tables, but crafting its leg for our world to stand on. This is from Sandra Seale. Now, while some African countries are making giant strides in women's political representation, others like Nigeria have um, achieved very little progress. So last week, President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu uh, represented, or rather presented his ministerial list to the Senate with 25% women representation, 10% uh, points short of his promised action um, plan to allow at least 35% participation of women in government positions as contained in his manifesto, um, Renewed Hope 2023. So today we'll be discussing women representation um, in the ministerial list and the impact on governance with Mu Mufuliet, <laughs> that's her name, Fijabi. Uh, she'll be joining us much later. But first, let's quickly run off. When we come back from that break, we'll see what we found in the news. All right, National Avocado Day is celebrated on the last day of July at the peak of the avocado season in California now. But luckily, avocados can usually be found in supermarkets all year round for people who want to eat them in all the seasons. National Avocado Day was founded in 2017 and has been observed annually and it's gaining a lot of popularity ever since. Who is a fan of avocado here? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How I love that. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, seeing so many videos on Instagram mm -hmm. on avocado salad, avocado ice awesome. cream, avocado this. I was wondering what was going on. In fact, the video I watched this morning was a woman actually showing you how to quickly check if an avocado is bad mm. so once you pick it up you know that small whatever at the top it, yeah. if you if you peel it off if it is dry or if it is hollow it's bad but if it is still fresh you can see mm. the the fresh avocado it means that avocado is good i said not be smart enough. avocado <laughs> is i think it's a super fruit actually it's mm. it's a food it's a whole meal on its own and mm. it's just uh, it's I just that it. these days uh, my sister if you touch one thing so i'm a big fan of so so Mm. Mm. Hey, I want to buy one. If you see this outside, it's not even big like this. 1,005. I bought a bunch of plantain yesterday for 6,000 naira. You know, I didn't even have the energy to <laughs> because, I mean, I have a child that loves plantain. And you know, we had talked about the ripening. Mm. 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 So we had run out. So I had been holding off not wanting to buy on the roadside because I, you know, I wanted to buy the bunch like I normally do. When I touched it, and they said, it's Madame, 6,000. I was like, you know, your brain just really like, <laughs> okay. I, you know, and I just said, okay, because I, my brain couldn't even comprehend. But anyway, we're talking avocado. avocado I yes, love yeah. avocado. Yeah. It's, it's a funny thing that I hated it as a child. So growing up, I would watch my mom eat a hot steaming bowl of white rice with avocado and a little salt. And I thought it was the most awful. So I can't even tell you when I switched from hating avocado to loving, to loving avocado. <laughs> but literally now, I can put avocado in a bowl with spoon. I just need small salt. Just tiny sauce. Well, like well. I, no, I, I, and I, mean, ah, I will just eat the whole thing. Mm. Okay. So and you know, the good thing is that it can serve as anything. It can yeah. serve as a dressing on your salad. It can serve as a spread. Yeah. yeah. For your crackers, it can serve as a spread on your bread. It can serve as any, like literally anything you want it. There's something really nice if you dice your tomato, put some parsley in it, dice your avocado, just mix it up. You have a salt, put on some olive oil. You can sprinkle black pepper, sprinkle small salt, you know. And oh, put chili flakes if you like. As in, yes, that's, that's, already. Like, that's guac now. You don't even like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, it, it's just so much. Yeah, that, like, I think the thing for me as well was that I used to, it used to go bad all the time in my fridge. Mm. And then I realized I actually could start freezing it. Mm. So I have it already like in little containers in my freezer. So when I'm blending, like sometimes I use it for salad. Like, yeah. just blend, or sometimes in smoothies. Like it's just so versatile. Absolutely. Oh yeah, well, what's our, what's in the news? Uti. <laughs> we have one man talk to you. Did you listen? We have Did one what's in the news. <laughs> The president's speech, that is the title yeah. of the news. Mm -hmm. Our presidential <laughs> speech. Go ahead. Well, it was a, I think I believe it was about a 40-point 
Yeah. Uh, 40 line items, if as that was what I should call it in the speech. It was live, I believe, at 7 p.m. today. Um, and he largely came to address the matters in the economy as they are today. Um, of course, we know that we're all facing, um, the country is going through economic hardship at the moment. We are seeing the effects of the removal of the subsidy. We're seeing the effects of the harmonization of the FX um, window. So basically, he's coming out to talk to us about the economy. And he said he wanted to talk in plain language um, and really just address the issues that we're facing. He um, highlighted his commitment right, to the fact that he had never been uh, or has consistently maintained the fact that the fuel subsidy had to go. He talked about the small select individuals who are benefiting from the subsidy. So essentially, the wealth of the many are in the hands of a few. Um, cough, cough. Um, <laughs> the preceding, um, he talked about the fact that the preceding administration saw the problems that this was causing um, and as such made no provision in the 2023 appropriations for the subsidy um, after June of this year. Um, he talked about the fact that people, again, highlighting the few making money from moving, um, just simply moving FX around to make money on the spread and that he had promised to fight the good fight in terms of reforming the economy. Um, and then talking about the defects in the economy, so we, had, we were just talking, funny enough, about the polarization, in fact, that the middle class is, has almost certainly disappeared, and we're now firmly in you know, such a polarized of the haves and have-nots. Um, he echoes that here, and that um, he's looking to remove those flaws in the economy. Um, and he says what he can offer in the immediate is to reduce the burden of the current economic situation in trying to understand that this is sort of the, dark bef the darkest before the dawn um, and that he's working closely or the federal government is working closely with the state governments to implement interventions to cushion um, the pain of the people. And then he then goes on to talk about the executive orders that he signed, the deferment of taxes, um, essentially trying to address the unfriendly fiscal policies that, um, that are currently in place to help places like businesses and the manufacturing sector to thrive. He then goes to talk about how there's 75 billion going to 75 enterprises, so we're, we're single digit interest rate of 9% for one billionaire, one billionaire credit to be paid over a max, repaid over a maximum of 60 months um, for long-term loans and 12 months for working capital. He also addresses the micro, small, and medium, that's the MSME sector, with 125 billion going to them. Um, out of that, 50, 50 billion of that will be a conditional grant to one million nano um, businesses uh, between now and March of 20, 2024. So their target is to give 50,000 to each of the 1,300 nano business owners in each of the 774 local governments across the country. Um, I mean, he largely reels out and he talks about food as well, food security, um, how he's trying to make food items more Avail more affordable. Of course, we saw the raiding of the um, right. warehouse in Adamawa yesterday and sadly the loss of two lives there. Um, so he talks about having ordered the immediate release of 200,000 metric tons of grain from strategic reserves to households across the 36 states and FCT to moderate prices, also providing 225,000 metric tons of fertilizer seedlings and other inputs to farmers who are committed to our food security. So again, we were talking about food insecurity just before the show. So these are some of the things that are in place. Cultivation of 500,000 hectares of farmland and all year round farming practice remains on course to be specific 200 billion out of 500 billion now approved by the, um, by the National Assembly will be dispersed. And then he goes on to read 50 billion to cultivate 150,000 hectares of rice and maize. 50 billion will also be earmarked to cultivate 100,000 hectares of wheat and cassava. Um, agricultural programs, uh, expertise. So essentially he's talking about you know, food security and what they're doing at that point in time. And then he's pledging to the fact that he is working to improve, to work for us and improve our welfare and living condition. 
again he says that's the only thing that keeps him up day and night okay. um, and he's approved infrastructure support fund for the state so we've seen some governors you know talking about the palliative mm -hmm. measures that they're taking so he's just highlighting that improvement of rural access roads to move um, farm produce to markets um, programs to roll out buses across the state and local governments for mass transit there's a provision there to invest 100 billion between now and March of 2024 to acquire 3,000 units of 20-seater CNG-fueled buses, um, and these will be shared to major transportation companies in the states mm. using the intensity of travel per, per capita. Um, and participating transport companies will be able to access the credit facility at 9% per annum again over the same 60-month um, repayment period. There is da 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 a review of salary for the minimum, new national minimum wage for workers. So they're working in collaboration with labor unions. Um, and that once, we ag once they agree on a new minimum wage mm. and a general upward review, then budget provision will be made for it for Im immediate implementation. Okay. So um, <laughs> he also takes the opportunity to salute private employers in the organized private sector who have already implemented general salary review. So well done to them. Um, he says this period may be hard on us, but there's no doubt about it. It is tough on us, but I urge you all to look beyond the present temporary pains and aim at the larger picture. Sadly, there was an unavoidable lag between subsidy removal and these plans coming fully online. However, we're swiftly closing the time gap. So he's pleading with us to please have faith in his ability to deliver and in our concern for the well-being of the populace. We will get out of the turbulence. Um, and Nigeria will be better equipped to be able to take advantage of the future that awaits her. In a little over two months, we have saved over a trillion naira that would have been squandered by the unproductive fuel subsidy, which only benefited smugglers and fraudsters. The money will now be used more directly and more beneficial, um, fulfilling the promise to make education more affordable. So referring to, the, of course, the loans for higher education that was um, uh, launched a few <laughs> months ago. Um, so basically, commitment to the greater good. I mean... He says, point 38 for me, we are also monitoring the effects of the exchange rate and inflation on gasoline prices. If and when necessary, we will intervene. The if and the when is now. Please intervene. So, <laughs> it's, it's for me, my take on this is, quickly. it's good that he spoke about it. Mm. He's, or rather, it's good that he came out to speak. I only wish that this had come out two months ago. And then we have seen in those two months how he's going to move quickly. Mm. That it took two months for this to come out mm -hmm. after the inauguration. For me, it's a bit slow. Mm. Um, it's very high level. For the average man on the streets, I'm not hearing what yeah. is here. So this is a good start. Please come out and tell us more as, you are, as your special advisors and co Everybody so is watching. the one trillion that has been saved... Is they haven't said have what okay. it's for. So that's why I'm saying that. Because they need to be very specific. Follow up they information. To have vague conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So yeah. it's a good start, right? But then where's the follow ups? And that's mm. what has to happen. If you say you're going to move quickly, communicate clearly, communicate yeah. often, and show this, us results. And this would, would have come. Me, I feel, you said after the subsidy announcement. Me, I feel that this one should have been the first announcement before subsidy. No, so no. the subsidy but announcement okay. came at inauguration. Mm. What yeah. this should have happened is, this should probably have come out a few days later. Yeah. Right? But these things, you know, they've happened. All of it's happened. We really... But we talked move. about buses. Right? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. talked about buses. We don't mm -hmm. have the road for more... Well, so there needs to be creativity yeah, okay. in transportation. Need to explore that yeah. There just needs yeah. to be other, particularly mm. in the larger cities. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lagos has a, a full waterway network. Can yeah. we try using that? Mm. I mean, mm. just even uh, let's commit to putting ferries on the water. Let's yeah. commit. I mean, people are coming from Korodu to. In fact, a member of my <laughs> team was saying today how it took him. It's 40 minutes. He said it was even a slow journey, but on the water from Mikorodu to CMS, 40 minutes. Yeah. Take people off the road. I mean, we're seeing the impact of cars already being off the road with the Absolutely. fuel subsidy, with the fuel right? Subsidy. So we just need to do more to move people around more effect efficiently. On that note, we await your implementation, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break now. Let's discuss the ministerial list.